What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red G Fox. And today we are Fun Fact Friday and we are going to be covering an actor from the show Sanford and Son and he is Officer Swanhauser, played by, I always want to say his name, hopefully I pronounce it right, Noam Pitlick, P-I-T-L-I-K, Noam Pitlick, and he played Officer Swanee, as Fred so commonly puts him, and we'll talk, this is going to be a brief episode, there's not a lot, some of it is interesting, some of it's pretty cool, but we'll cover anything that is important in his life, and who was he? Now, first thing, his first appearance ever in Sanford and Son is, we already covered in our episode breakdown recently, the fourth episode, The Copper Caper, in that one where they steal copper, and it's the first time we're introduced to Smitty and Swanee, as he is Swanhauser, and Fred calls him uh, Swanee, which I actually love the way Fred says it. Hey, what's happening, Smitty? Hey, what's going on, Swanee? But before we get into anything else about him, we're only going to talk a little bit about him in Sanford and Son. Let's get to some things in his background. 1951, he worked as a set design for a construction crew at a Philadelphia experimental theater. So his first taste into acting and show was actually working with a crew that was building it and designing a set at a different area. The following year in 52, he became a cast member at the Summer Theater Guild. And he actually did other things such as off-Broadway work and character actors. So he did live stage performance, which is always great when you get to t live studio audiences. But he did a lot of stuff like that with off-Broadway work. Um, so he helped design the sets, and then he eventually started working on it and uh, did a whole bunch of things where it was Broadway, whole off-Broadway, and did a lot of different individual shows listed on there. Some things we've never even heard of. Um, this is interesting. He was also a director later on in his career. He actually won an Emmy too. In 1979, he won Emmy for Outstanding Director for a Comedy Series. And ironically, it is with a former Sanford and Son cast member, Ron Glass, as the show he directed was Barney Miller, and he won it. Congratulations, that's awesome. We all know Barney Miller, and I think it's cool that Ron Glass, who has been on multiple episodes of Sanford and Son, including who worked with Lamont, or Lamont, but Damon Wilson later on, on The Odd Couple, when they redid The New Odd Couple with them. So it's a nice little, how you can all bring them about, and they all have some kind of interconnection. But yeah, big director. We'll cover some of the other things he directed as well. He also was in many, many, when you hear the shows he's in there, and I'm trying to think on some of them because I've seen some of the shows and I'm like, well, what part did he play in that? But he was a big time character actor, right? With character actors, they are someone who could be good, but not so memorable that they get typecast and they can be in 20 things, 50 things. Let's go through a list of some of the shows you probably heard of he's been in. So character actors, this is what he was on. He was on The Untouchables. Yes, the TV show, not the movie. All these are the TV shows. The Untouchables. I've only watched a little bit of that. The Rifleman, very good Western show. The Rifleman, we've heard of that. The Patty Duke Show, Gunsmoke. See, with these, I'm like, I could see him as being a cowboy. The fact that he was in The Rifleman and Gunsmoke totally fits his profile. He could be a good guy or bad guy. My favorite, my favorite Martian. I, I never watched that show, I've heard of it. My favorite Martian. The Munsters, now I've seen all the Munsters and I love the Munsters. I have some of my favorite episodes. And I scratch my head going, what was he in that? So it's like I'd have to go back and look him up and find out what episode he was in. Character, remember, so he's going to have a small part. He's not going to be a big role, but a small part. The Munsters. Gidget, another great show back then. The Andy Griffith Show. You've already heard uh, me profess my love for The Andy Griffith Show on previous episodes. And for the life of me, I'm thinking, I'm like, was who was he? Uh, it drives me nuts because I'm like, I know Andy Griffith and you think I would have known. I'm trying to think if he was another uh, cop or sheriff in a different episode, but Andy Griffith show, that's cool. The Gomer Pyle, the spinoff of Andy Griffith show. Get Smart, I Dream of Genie, Hogan's Heroes. I mean, these are some top notch shows and 25 more other ones, possibly maybe even closer to 30. That is so much character actor work. And he was only in a couple of shows where he was, you know, a main concern, uh, like a role where he had a reoccurring role. Now, we just talked about some of the shows. I'm guaranteeing you've heard those. And then, like I said, the 25 other ones, some of them I heard of, some of them I never have, but still, that's a lot, dude. A lot of great character work. So good job for him, which probably helped in his next line, which he actually did more of, and that's directing. I think sometimes the best coaches in sports are usually the guys who were 
not the best athletes, the guys who kind of struggled, who had to really push hard and to get on there. And even if they were backups, they had to learn everything because they had to be prepared. And I think they make the best coaches because then when you get guys like Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan who were coaching or GM, they expect everyone to be on their level because they're just naturally gifted and they put in the work. And it's sometimes it doesn't translate in, in the coaching world while you look at guys like, you know, other athletes who you go, I remember that guy, he was a backup, you know, Sean McVay. Sean McVay was like a uh, good college quarterback, but he was just a background guy learning plays. He was never going to be this elite guy, yet he's one of the smartest minds and sucked it up like, soaked up like a sponge. And I think that's how he was with all the different character acting. Think of all the directors you're around, right? When you're a big star, you might be a handful of that show, but that's it. When you are a character actor who just went in, I listed over 30 plus shows, you are seeing countless directors. And I think that really helps when you see these kind of guys take off in a bigger role as he was director. Listen to some of these shows. Wings, did you ever see that? I love that show in the, in the 80s, or I actually think it was early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s, Wings. He directed 27 different episodes of that. I did not know that. Night Court. I really enjoy Night Court. I still have fond memories of that show, but he only directed one episode, but still, he directed it. Big show. Mr. Belvedere. I love Mr. Belvedere. I grew up with that as a little, you know, as a, a 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old, whenever it was out. But I love, and I watched the reruns as well. Mr. Belvedere. He did 44 episodes of Mr. Belvedere. That's a big impact. No clue, dude. I had no clue all these times watching these shows. That, that, that's Officer Swanee, you know? That is Red Fox's buddy Swanee out there directing all these shows. Taxi. Taxi, he did 11 episodes. All right, got to work with Danny DeVito. And One Day at a Time, Schneider and the Gang, 18 episodes. So that is a very impressive directing list, including, like we mentioned, an Emmy for Barney Miller. So great job. I think that was his calling. When it comes to entertainment, as funny as he could be and as serious as he could be, I think he's great range for both types. This was his, his calling and directing. Now, Sanford and Son, as Officer Swanee, we talked about the first episode he was in. He was only in six episodes of the entire series. And it does feel like it, you know, it does. It's kind of like with, with Melvin, where I feel like they were there, they were impactful and memorable, and then they were gone. And you sit there and go, oh yeah, I remember that guy, you know, after your season four or five, or you see, you know, you maybe didn't see the season one as much. Like me, I, season one is probably the least watched season for me of Sanford and Son. And you go, oh yeah, I remember Swanee. You're always thinking it's Hoppy and Smitty. And I think it's kind of like you want more, but it just didn't happen. He went away. And honestly, watching his roles, he is very serious. I think he pulls off the gag of high, you know, speaking very uh, police talk and then going to Fred and then Fred looking at Smitty and Smitty breaking it down in layman's terms. Easier for Fred to understand because Smitty knows the, the, the lingo of the, the neighborhood and stuff. So I think that was a great joke. It worked a little bit, not as much with Hoppy like I've covered before. Hoppy felt like he was part of them, like he was in the neighborhood. He was trying hard to learn this, the lingo, right? He was always messing it up, but through time he got better at it. And Smitty and Hoppy uh, felt like cops you'd want to call. Even though Swanee was kind of cool, if you look at him, there's times he's like very stern. You know, he's saying, saying something and he's like, what, what, what? And he's like, oh, sorry. I, I like the jokes, but... Um, Hoppy is, in my opinion, a better cop, so I'm glad that we did get Hoppy later on. Now, the best laugh I want to say from that I got from him from the episodes that he was in was probably the one where it was we were robbed, and Fred is you know making up a story about being robbed because of the porcelain that he broke them on stuff, and when he's taking the report and they're going back and forth, is as he's saying four assailants, and he's like four, and Fred's like, is that enough? But then, because he's making it up, but then he's all, were they colored? And then and he's asked that, and Fred looks at him, and Fred's all, yeah, white. <laughs> That's my best favorite scene of him is the way he says it, and then when Fred look, stops, and he's like, yeah, yeah, they were colored white, because that's exactly what it is. White is the color. So, yeah, I think they, they played that joke so well at that time, but that's the most memorable scene I have, and from that, from him, and then also the fact that it was... Who cares? Anyways, so, oh yeah, the jokes were back and forth translating. So that is it. There's not, like I said, not a much on Noam uh, Pit Pitlick. It could be Patilic. It could be Patilic. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But Officer Swanee, very short. I just wanted to touch on him because I'm like, 
We're in season one right now in our episode breakdown. We got to meet him in one of the episodes, and he'll be gone. And so I'm like, I don't want to talk about him in three months when we're on season five or six, or whatever the case may be. It's like, that's not the time. Let's talk about it now that we're in season one. And it's a guy that we kind of, just like I talked about Melvin earlier a few, few weeks back, it's someone who's fresh in our minds from the season, and uh, not a lot of information is known about him. He also, a few other things I don't want to talk about, life, death, uh, married four, uh, four times, and I don't believe he had any children. So that is it. He did it later on in life, even though he's kind of retired. He did appear in some other shows, some uh, early 90s comedies, as a, you know, like a, another character here and there. But for the most part, after he was done with Sanford and Sanford, it, it was uh, directing. Directing was his call, and he did an excellent job, as we mentioned before. So give a like, give a subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Friday, Fun Fact Friday. And stay tuned. Uh, just had a short put up last night, and we will have more. I want to break down some scene on Saturday. We'll see if it gets out. If not, we will see you again on Tuesday as we do episode breakdown every Tuesday. Get it out there. Let your friends know who are Sanford and Sen fans. Spread the word out in the community. Let's get this channel bigger. It's slowly growing, but I really want to get us in triple digit subscribers. So if you're watching and you like it, give a subscribe as well. Talk to you guys later. Peace.